All right. Well, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about preparation coming on into this event for these teams. Because obviously, this is the World Championship. You cannot take this kind of thing lightly. And we know that none of the teams have been. From your conversations with the other players, from your conversations with the other teams, what do you think the preparation has been like for these two teams coming into the World Championship? Yeah, they have definitely studied with East Asia and Japan specifically. They are scrim partners, so they play each other pretty often because of the, of the server uh, latency between the two regions. So you're going to see a lot of them playing mind games with when it comes to draft. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're going to play Taka, for example, like Detonation does, then Alpha may be a good pick, or Petal may be a really yeah. good pick into that. So they're going to basically look at what the comfort picks are and then pick a very hard counter into it. Yeah, trying to look to play those mind games. They already know their opponents, so they know how to play around them. Yeah, I mean, you talk about the preparation. Uh, Detonation Gaming is one of the teams that, uh, from talking to them, they studied G2 very heavily. It's the other team that is in the same group. They focused a lot on studying G2, knowing what they have to prepare against them. But Kraken is a team that is, it's hard to scout just because they come out of China. Mm -hmm. They have the VODs, yes, but it's harder to read. So both of these teams don't have the best read on one another. So it's going to be interesting to see how the drafts will play out and later on when they get into the game, the, the rotations as well. Yeah, I think one of the keys for this matchup in particular, because we talked about you know, the unpredictability of a team like Detonation and the, the lack of content to be able to review for a team like Kraken, so much of this is going to be focusing on just Playing what you know, playing your your own comfort picks, worry a little bit about what your opponents are doing, but primarily just try and make sure that you have a strong composition, ban away what's strong against what you're trying to run, and just try and focus on playing your game to your style. All right, we'll see if they can make the game happen in their style. And this is one of the big things about international competition, is it's not always easy to just play your own play style. It's not always easy to make the game go how you want it to. Sometimes you have to adapt and you have to play to your opponent's play style. And sometimes that can be a huge thorn in the side of teams. We've, we've seen it in the past, and not just in this eSport, in all eSports, when teams change their play style coming into an international tournament. That can often really hurt their chances on the big stage. Yeah, for sure. And that's something that they need to keep in mind that, you know, they got to focus on their strengths and that's what's going to get you really far. Um, and that's what you train for, right? If you try to adapt something yeah. that's not you're not used to, you're going to struggle a little bit harder. Now, I want to talk a bit about their strengths as well. We talked about it earlier on the stream, but we've had quite a long delay. So I do just want to reiterate a little bit on the play styles of these two teams. Now, we'll start with Detonation. They're the team coming out from East Asia. Iraqi Zoro, we've been casting a little bit of the East Asian stuff. Can you talk me through what, to, what we can expect to see from Detonation? Indeed. I mean, Detonation Gaming and also... EA in general, they have a very specific playstyle where they like to focus on the Elder Treants throughout the early minutes of the game. The first four minutes, the first uh, until the Elder Train is gone, they like to focus on him. They rotate very passively, get that objective, and then past that point, they try to play around the lane. Siege the turrets, try to get advantages that way, hit power spikes very well. They understand their win conditions extremely well as well, like Suijinez has mentioned in the past. So it's a team that takes it very, uh, takes the game one step at a time and they're very well calculated yeah so a very very specific game plan that they try and make happen over the course of the game but then on the other side of the scoreboard we've got team kraken and it feels like it's almost an opposite style of play coming in against detonation here yeah very much a very aggressive style they like to just try and make plays happen very early on try and get these huge leads right off the bat and just force their opponents into situations where they're likely to make mistakes. It's a very aggressive, high-risk, high-reward play style, but it's also very fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's always going to be an exciting game to watch, especially since it's the first game we're going to be seeing here on the mainstream. Obviously, we have already had one game on the off stream, and I want to remind you guys of the format as well, because it is best of twos coming out right here. So it's possible for there to be ties, and it's possible for there to be tiebreakers at the end of today if things don't go one-sidedly. We're already a little bit behind schedule, so I hope that doesn't happen right now, but... <laughs> It's going to be very exciting to see later on in the day how things are panning out with these groups. And we were talking about it earlier. This group especially is incredibly important. And this game is going to be a real pacemaker for the rest of the group. Today. Exactly. I mean, that's what I want to touch on is the fact that this group is very open in terms of who's going to come out first, who's going to come out second, and most importantly, who's going to get knocked out and go back home. This is the group stage where if you come out third, you go back home, come so far away just to do that. So... 
it, it's something that Here you're going to have go. to be careful about. Throw it back to you, Montevos. It's time to get on into the draft. It's time to kick off our first mainstream game. We have Lyra banned by Detonation. We have Churnwalker banned by Kraken, the two captains we were talking about the most. And then Arden will be the first lock-in for our yeah, Japanese with team. Arden being picked here, Vox and Blackfeather look really strong right now. And I think Blackfeather will probably be potentially picked because you can flex them into jungle as CP if you want. But they're going to go for the Rona pick. So out of the top three, Vox will be banned and Blackfeather will probably be picked up by either Kraken or Definition here. So, so talk me through this Rona first pick, because that's something that we haven't really seen that much as a first pick in previous patches. Yeah, a lot of times it was picked up something a little bit later on in the draft, acting as a hard counter, but it started to rise in prominence and become this force that was just really difficult to deal with. Ooh, and awesome. with the Lyra already off the board, all of a sudden this Rona pick becomes that much stronger. It kind of negates a potential Black Feather pick in a way too, mm -hmm. because you don't want to run in into the Rona pickup. This tag cap ban right there tells me that the nation wants to pick Sky because it's such a good counter against the yep. Rona. So Kraken have a very tough answer right here that they're gonna need to deal with. Do they take the Sky or do they give it over and that's a potential counter pick into the Rona? I think with Taka banned already, you go ahead and grab the Sky right here. You run Sky Rona. That's a very strong Coming duo. Guys, who are you gonna you put the for? Sky you in the jungle as the crystal power. Noise, you put the Rona in the lane with the weapon power on, and then you grab yourself something like noise, a lance noise, go, go, as your final yeah. pick who's so, gonna keep everyone so, in, the, in the same spot. Right, I was... Sky nice. is a great point, but like I said, Blackfeather is a priority pick for Kraken. They played Blackfeather with Lori Lorelei actually as a captain with Rona, which is actually a pretty strong combination, and they can secure the kill onto the Sky. However, Destiny does have Arden, but they will probably go with the Sky here. And looking at their past draft, Sky looks really good, for example, with um, uh, with like a, like they could potentially do a weapon Sky and even Batiste with Arden is a very popular EA combination that they like to play. So we could see that come out as well. I mean, Sky is one of the picks that we saw so much of throughout the autumn season in EA just because of how well they can play her mechanically. Yeah. They're one of the most or some of the most solid players in all of Vainglory, the East Asian region and the nation is one of those teams. So with the Sky, with the Cruel, that's going to be a comp that just wants to kite away the Black Feather, kite away the Rona. Yeah, and not only that, but Kroll into the Rona. If you can get those weakness stacks built up on Rona, all of a sudden her red mist doesn't become anywhere near as much of a threat as it is otherwise. So that's going to be very, very important to see where he goes. But a oh, fortress. fortress comes oh. You want to see some aggressive play coming out of Kraken. That's how you do it. We said they were going to be aggressive. I didn't realize they were going to be quite this aggressive. <laughs> this is one heck of a composition. How are we expecting this one to go? Is this what we were talking about before? Is this going to be the same pace that we were talking about? It was exactly what I was talking about before. We mentioned the sky pick being a high priority. Fortress plays really well into it because when you pop your ultimate and the wolves start chasing sky, they can block her damage quite effectively because they block the forward brush that she tries to use. Yeah, not only that, Fortress is actually a really good counter to Cruel because the motor wound that you can burst Cruel down. Cruel has to sustain in fights. And against the Fortress, he can't really sustain because he's going to be bursted down by the mortal wounds and the uh, missing health damage all right so now that the draft is locked in now that we're ready to jump into this first game i want to ask you guys who do you think has a favor coming out of this draft who has to be the ones making things happen and who's the ones that are actually going to be having priority in this game? i mean we've been talking about it all along kraken is the team that needs to be making the plays here and they have a composition that needs to be going aggressive right off the bat they need to get that fortress to six they need to get the Rona to six, and then they can start winning team fights handily if they have that advantage. All right, very quickly before we throw this one to the game, I'm going to ask you guys, who do you think is going to take this series, the full best of two? We'll start with you, CJ. Kraken wins the early game, definitely wins the late game, so Kraken's going to take it. You think Kraken's going to take this? I think Kraken's going to take this game series. I think it's going to go 1-1. One, one. I do think that Nation is going to win this as well, just because Kraken will have to push a very specific point in the mid game. I don't think they're going to be able to do it quite effective enough. All right, so we have a split desk on this one. We want to know who you guys at home want to take this one as well. Hashtag Vainglory Worlds is the way you can get in touch on social media. But it's about time that we throw this one up to our casters and get ready to get into our first mainstream game of the deck.
um, picks that you're seeing coming out from Team Kraken. And that's going to allow him to build up those item spikes a bit more quickly because your gold income in the lane is a bit higher. Right now, though, Destination are just shoving in Kraken. Who is taking a fair bit of damage on the front line as well. Royal just punishing him with that forward barrage. A little bit of a skerfuffle, but Babylon should be all right to just back off rather sharp. Although that smite takes him down to about half HP. And now Detonation are just going to have control of this front jungle. And Detonation have got really good lane pressure as well. If they can keep themselves safe and avoid engaging, you know, especially into these sort of clumped up areas, they have really, really good lane pressure going up against that first turret. And obviously the lane pressure that... Um, the lane pressure that Team Kraken have in return just isn't good unless they find a fight to capitalize from it. You can't take three melee heroes, run them up to a turret and expect to siege it easily because it's very easy for Detonation Gaming to defend that, especially early on. So Team Kraken are going to have a harder time pushing that advantage because they have to find specific areas and specific fights to then turn into some sort of push onto the turret. Not going to be the same way for, for Detonation Gaming. They're going to be able to defend a bit easier and siege a bit easier. And I'm wondering whether Royale goes for a frost burn here because I think you know, it's something that started to come back in 2.10 and I think you know, it would be a good I uh, item to pick up in this specific scenario because you're against a heavy melee composition that wants to dive you. So Frostburn could be a good pickup. It could be. It does like Detonation are going to come back towards the lane as Kraken did push that initial wave in. Although going fairly low at the moment, Babylon's in a lot of trouble. In fact, Atuki's is just going to chase him up. Spectral Smite doesn't come out and kill him, but very low goes the Crawl. Has to back off. Mortal Wounds chipping away at him as well. Can't heal as much up. Uh, it'll be Destination Gaming disengaging here, and they're just going to have to play around their turret. One thing that I, I, I really want to see Detonation Gaming be aware of is they are being very aggressive here. Yes, you have a Cruel. Cruel allows you to be aggressive in the early game. You can scale quite well into the mid game. But you do have to remember you're fighting up against a team that is designed to get some sort of advantage in the early to mid game. Don't make it easy for them. Your win conditions can also take you towards the late game. Wait for those items to be built up on the sky. Unless you see a really obvious opportunity to get a pick and get a really uh, sort of dominant team fight, don't make it easy for Team Kraken to do that. Don't unnecessarily engage because you running at them makes Team Kraken's job 10 times easier. Well, we know Destination know how to play to their win condition. They do it all so well, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. Making sure they do not take the fight to Kraken, rather Kraken go for that all-in engage, and they can use uh, they can use their ability to kite back. And you can see it just happening there as well. Kraken making the three-man rotation down to the bottom side of the map, and then rotating to their uh, top side just to make sure they can catch the wave. Yeah, they push the wave in. They make a safe trip to the jungle shop. They're going to get some item spikes. Frostburn is down. Breaking point in, uh, straight up for Tatuki as well, which is something that we haven't seen on a crew for a while. But Team Kraken have set up uh, a brush bait here. They will get spotted out by a flare. Not going to commit, and they're going to allow uh, Royale just to move back up to the lane without being punished too heavily here. Yeah, exactly that. Elder Triant not, uh, Triant, not quite finding its mark. Tatuki even took that versus three members of Kraken. They are going to rotate towards the lane again. The Royal should be safe with that Vanguard. Oh, he does uh, take a little bit of damage from Mr. Dog, but they should be able to back off. And also, we're now at the point in the game where the jungle has become a little bit more closed off with post four minutes. Royale has got a really important ability, his death from above. That has been unlocked. That's going to allow him to position that effectively when he's getting dove on or, you know, when he's trying to separate and then sort of piece out these team fights. This is actually a really good place for Detonation to be in. Kraken have not pressured them whatsoever in a composition that should really be looking to pressure. Now, you do have moderately good scaling on the CP Blackfeather, and Rona can scale up quite nicely as well. So if they find these perfect fights where they can just dive Sky and blow her up in a matter of seconds, there is always that out for Team Kraken. But the, the longer you leave it, the harder it gets. And Sky is only going to scale up more and more. Cruel is going to be used for that peeling tactic of just reducing the damage output of whoever's trying to put pressure onto Sky. So really, like the analyst desk said, it, it really favors Detonation Gaming the longer this goes. And it doesn't really feel like Team Kraken have an idea about how they want to pressure. They haven't even got close enough to putting enough damage on this first turret. Well, they're going to move in now. Bubbler has picked up that Shatterglass as well. So completing his first item. Mua did pick up that Serpent's Mask a little bit earlier on as well. So power spikes are there. No level six on Mr. Dog just yet, but he is creeping towards that. So we'll be able to unleash the Hounds very shortly. The one thing that uh, the Shatterglass does offer now for um, Team Kraken is that it does give them a slightly better mid 
each late game on the Black Feather. You can play a ranged game once Black Feather hits level 8. You overdrive that on point, you have a massive range on it. You can get a lot of work done before you find that engage with the Fortress and the Rona. So the Shatter Class is going to give him a slightly better damage output, especially if he's finding the opportunity to land those on points onto Royale throughout this, uh, you know, sort of this mid to late game. So again, having the Shatter Glass there gives a slightly different win condition for uh, Team Kraken because they're going to be a bit more uh, able to put pressure on the squishy tiger of Royal. Well, Team Kraken love to be aggressive in the early game, but they just have not done that. In fact, they've prioritized vision over everything else. They've been able to spot out destination gaming more often than not if they do go for some aggressive moves. But right now, they are waiting for this fight to really happen, but it's now just Mr. Dog call a little bit out here. Should be able to get away rather easily, though. So you do go for the big re-engage but Kiz is just going to back off. So I like that they've prioritized vision, but if you, if you spend that much on vision in the early game, you better be darn sure that you're going to do something with it. And they haven't really had that opportunity yet. They put vision in the shot side of detonation game. That's a lot of damage going on to Royale there. Yeah, Mu is taking a lot of damage as well. There come the attack of the pack. There comes the oh! noise. Surfboard hits him. Gorla comes down as well. Two-man stun. Mr. Dog has to back out of there. Spectral Smite on the top of Cruel. Can he just take him out? Mu is just surviving for so long. Spectral Mike takes him down to half HP. Into the play. Straight Right on top of Tatuki, ends up going down for first blood. Damage just not there yet from Royale. He's not able to put the pressure on. He's gone for a, 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 a broken mid second. Yeah, there's a little bit of shielding coming out, but goodness oh, me, they're Royal diving. going very low into the fray. Pramua does manage to secure the kill on Royal. Turret dive competition works out perfectly, and even Babala surviving off that fight as well. And Detonation Gaming are so desperate to take these fights, they just, they just don't need to. You know, they, they can wait this out until you get three or four item, items on the sky, and then you can absolutely crush, you know, whatever Team Kraken are trying to throw at you. Tatuki jumping in there by himself. He was trying to essentially one versus three. Royale, what, with this build, just doesn't have any kind of scaling damage in these team fights. So realistically, they need to hold off a little bit. I'm, I would be looking for a Dragon's Eye second item. It's a really good item on Sky. It's kind of what made Sky good on 2.10. He's gone for the Broken Myth. This is kind of an old school Sky build. Like this is kind of what you'd see maybe three or four updates ago before we had the reworks to some of these CP items. So I would have been looking for maybe a Dragon's Eye second. Gives her some scaling in these fights because this is what Team Kraken are kind of having now. These are kind of elongated fights that they're coming out on top of after they've built those breaking point stacks and Rona obviously using that sustain. Oh, they're taking a lot of damage from those on points, but trades it back rather handily. Although another one, 480 that's, damage. That's what I mean about the Shadow Glass. It gives you that potential. A Royal might, might even have to consider some shielding early on here if he's getting hit by them consistently. I think, you know, I think that was a good pickup for Babala. That could be really impactful in trying to shut down that one wing. Two he's coming in. Gorla comes out, traps three members of Kraken in place. Nice from Hell's Heart. Does actually stun up Babala for the time being, but it doesn't matter because Skatuki is going down solo. Just healed up from the Spectral Smite. If he can get it off, he goes down again. Kraken find another kill, and that's the second one on the board for the Rona. Goodness me, Rono sustained so heavily and, and Cruel didn't go for a poison shift first against the Rono who's definitely going to go Serpent's Mask. It doesn't give him the sustain that he needs in these fights and Rono is going to sustain like crazy with that Serpent's Mask as well. I mean, if I was Tatuki, I would have been going for poison shift because it gives me so much potential to shut down Rono. The fact that you haven't means that Rono just sustains like crazy. Breaking Point is one of these items on Cruel that I have a, a, a pet peeve with. Breaking Point itself is really bad at stacking itself, if that makes sense. By only having Breaking Point, it's really hard to stack Breaking Point. You need more items behind it to give you that, that damage necessary to get the stacks during these team fights. This is a build that I would have seen on a crawler a year ago and said, okay, that, you know, that's, that's normal, but it's not so good now, especially on 2.10. Really not so good, and Poison Shift feels necessary in this game. Even if Harvest has been, has been finished off of Vivi, but again, Dragon's Eye, I feel, needed to be thought of here because right now they're just losing the sustain war because they don't have Poison Shift, and they just don't have the damage to get through all that sustain coming in. Well, they're initiating the fights as well. Yeah. Gauntlet's in, and then Tatuki just runs a babbler, trying to take him down, but... You gotta, you can't ignore this Rona. She just jumps in, red mist, that breaking point stacks instantly to 20. It feels like in Destination Gaming, they've just fallen time and time again. This is their second fight in a row they've lost now. And Royal is just not putting out the damage he needs to be. He's gonna go for the small engagement. Tuki going extremely low. Nice for his offensive in. The Crucible as well on the depth from above. 
Yeah, they get out scot free. The only thing that Destination Gaming do have going for them is it's 11 minutes now, and although Team Kraken have taken a couple of successive team fights in their favor, no first turret has been able to get sieged efficiently because, again, a triple melee. Oh, that's a massive oh, amount of damage. Oh, Fountain's going to get popped as well. Mortal Wound to stop the healing on Royal, and they're still going to go for this turret dive. Mua is taking the aggro from the turret, so it had to back off. Death from above doesn't quite find anybody just yet, but Babala looking for those on points. Yeah, and he's going to have that siege advantage now that he's post level 8. That's huge damage onto Tatuki. Tatuki just not able to survive here. Yeah, Royale's going to back off. First turret goes down. Kraken going to find their first one on the board. 0 to 3 right now. Detonation Gaming so uniform in the way they play. Know their win conditions, but right now, they're the ones doing the engaging. Maybe, perhaps, they need to just kite back and then play around this gauntlet. Yeah, a gauntlet should be used defensively, I think, in all cases. Your kids just goes up and shops a little bit and also it's very difficult to shut down a rona but you know rona has red mist as the majority of her damage in some of these team fights so atlas pauldrons isn't super effective against rona because red mist isn't affected by her attack speed so it's so difficult to shut down a rona when she's ahead because there oh. aren't really items oh mr. mr dog's gonna get stunned from that death from above will he be able to get out the answer is yes well, it does use that into the fray to get a little bit more distance and uh, just present himself in the lane. They are extremely low. They've got to be careful taking this chunk damage, although Tatuki is on the sidelines as well, making his presence known. Mua has to actually pop that flask to keep himself alive for the time being. Atlas Baldur's has been finished. It'll be good for Mua when he's not in that red mist. You know, it will slow down that attack speed. Rona has a very high...
from Royal, but he can't do much else. That Kraken's still knocking on the base. Oh, Babala so close. Here we go. He's going to continue. Oh, the death of Rebirth. Royal the place. is so low. He needs to get out of there. They've still taken two turrets. The Crystal stands between them and taking the first game of the series. Royal has to take down three members of the Kraken, but I'm not sure it's going to happen. Team Kraken secure themselves game number one. And that came out of nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. The composition from Detonation Gaming should have had that late game impact against this heavy dive composition, but there were some really key things that I don't think were being executed properly. I don't think the death from above were in co the correct position. Sometimes I think sometimes they were slightly off. You just saw that the Team Kraken team managed to move past that area that was getting focused with that death from above. And, and Cruel, no, no poison shift first against the Rono who's going to go Serpent's Mask, maybe a mistake. And sometimes the gauntlets weren't being used to kite and create enough space. That's the, the couple of the issues there that I saw from Detonation Gaming. It might just be nerves. This is obviously a long wait for them to get into this game. So it might just be nerves. We might see them reset. They're an incredible team. We'll have to see what happens in this next game of the best of two. An incredible team with an incredible amount of experience as well. One thing you've got to keep in mind is Detonation Gaming. They've been through two teams together. Yeah. And that's what Kraken do not have. Maybe that experience is needing to come through and shine. You can see some massive regional differences in the meta though. Massive regional differences. The, the, the build path is just something that I wouldn't even consider. I would have you know, been completely different in my own thinking there. But it, obviously they had their own ideas. The initial broken myth maybe to get through early shielding that a heavy melee composition is going to build up against you. There was just so much to chew on from what we've seen from our first game of Worlds. I think we've got four beautiful analysts over on the desk, though, to break that game down even further. Take it away, Munch. Yes, we are ready to break that game down just a little bit and take a look at what just happened before our very eyes. We were expecting EA to come into the whole tournament as general favorites, as one of the stronger regions. EA won the World Championship last time around, but Team Kraken coming in swinging. We were talking about how they would be aggressive, but this was beautiful, calculated aggression across yeah, the game. Yeah, that was the biggest thing for me in this game. It wasn't just aggression for the sake of aggression. They were choosing when to go in very carefully, and they knew when their opponents were power spiking, and playing around that more so than playing around their own power spikes, which was very interesting to me, because it's not something you see frequently. Like, early on in this game, there's a rotation where the members of Detonation all rotated down to the shop, picked up their first tier three items, and to answer this, Kraken all sat in one brush that they knew that they would have to try and walk through if they wanted to try and capitalize on that power spike and just completely negated that tier three item team-wide shop that they made and then waited for their opportunity to take down Kroll. Yeah, fantastic play coming out from Kraken. Incredibly impressed. Sweetjay, what are your thoughts coming into this first game? Kraken, they seem a lot stronger than I was expecting. Yeah, I called that Kraken would win. They had a beautiful draft and they played it very well. However, they didn't play the early game as strong as I expected them to, honestly. That nation did a really good job stalling because the first turret went down at the 12-20 mark and the first goal mine went down at 10-30 mark. So Kraken actually could have played more aggressive, but that nation did a really good job uh, defending. However, the, what I saw in the team fights is Cruel kept diving in, and you cannot dive in against a, a fortress composition like that. He, they just needed to peel for Sky and let her uh, basically poke and peel. And every time Cruel dived in, they lost the fight. All right. Now, Iraqi Zari, I want you to talk to me about what happened here with Detonation, because EA are usually quite good at stalling to the late game, but they just couldn't hold on to the match. I mean, honestly, Kraken just showed up huge. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed with how Kraken played, especially when it comes to their win condition, because they kept on focusing Cruel on the front line. Instead of just chasing this guy into their demise, they focused the Cruel because he was overextending. They would kill him first, then move on to clean up the team. And every time they got an advantage, they also puff, pushed for more and more until they snowballed their goal lead. So it's less about what the nation did, more about how amazingly beautiful Kraken played that game. Absolutely. Fantastic stuff coming out from Kraken. We do have a replay from that game as well. This is one of the later game team fights that came out and this was Kraken really just managing to make a, a significant mark on the game but just managing to out team fight detonation yeah able to navigate through the double gauntlet that comes down 2.10 the double gauntlet is still a thing the Venn diagrams but 
they navigated these gauntlets exceptionally well to avoid the massive stuns. And again, you see just how early Kroll goes down in this fight. A full five seconds before anyone else on the team. And all of a sudden, you're just left with Sky trying to 1v3. And while everyone is low, they pick their time to go in. They wait until all the abilities are off cooldown again and jump in as a team, get that huge burst. Yeah, absolutely. Phenomenal stuff coming out from Kraken. Incredibly well coordinated during these team fights. And it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Over in Group D, we've been talking about hunters. We've been talking <laughs> about how hunters were dominating the Chinese region. If Kraken looked this strong, yeah. hunters might just be a terrifying force to be looking towards. And actually, on the alternate stream, we do have a result coming on in Hunters have managed to win their first game against Team Solo wow. Mid. Wow. Which means everything is up in the air now. A lot of people believe that North America were the strongest region coming into the World Championship, but suddenly China are looking pretty fantastic. I mean, they're looking amazing. If Hunters took a game off of Ace Gaming, I mean, that just opens up the group of death as well because now Hunters are looking so strong going up against Ace Gaming next. It's going to be just so incredibly and beautiful to watch these teams play. And I want to touch on the fact that Kraken, they're just, the game knowledge is so impressive right now. And I just want to keep on watching them play against the nation. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to be able to do exactly that. As we move towards the second game in this series then, what are we expecting to change here for Detonation? Because obviously, this wasn't even a very close game. There was a singular ace that went the way of Detonation. But other than that, this was all about Kraken. What can change here for Detonation for them to pull themselves back into the series? One of the big things is just going to be their adaptation to how they're building. You know, we heard Excoundrel and Jaws talking about it a bit as well. The going for the breaking point as your only offensive item on Kroll into a Rona, that's just not something that anyone would recommend, I don't feel. And so the fact that they went for that and didn't go for the poison shift to try and negate some of that fortified health and try and be able to take Rona down in the fights, they weren't playing as the, you know, protect the sky that we were expecting, like mm. Sweetie was mentioning as well. So the adaptation going into game number two is something we talked about at the top of the show that needs to come through for detonation here if they're going to even the series up. All right, we'll have to see what they are going to change coming on forward. Definitely, it felt like a shaky start for detonation, but let's remember this is the first game that they're playing here on the main stage in front of a live audience. There's a lot of pressure on these players, so maybe they'll be able to even things up coming on in, but I, I feel like it's not just about like the draft. It's not just about item builds. It's more about kind of confidence on the map as well, because it felt like Kraken were absolutely dictating everything in this game. And there was one or tw once or twice that we saw Detonation making proactive moves, but none of them seemed to be the right moves. Every time it happened, we'd see Crawl just get taken out before the fight. I mean, how, how can they play differently here, Sweet Jay, to make things work for themselves? Yeah, the key is uh, they need to synergize the, the Crawl and the carry and land the ultimates, like stun, Sky ultimate and Crawl ultimate stun, and then work around that instead of diving yeah. in as Crawl. But here's a draft coming up. You can see that Arden is always prioritized in this meta. Very popular pick. So we can see Vox, Rona, or Black Feather being banned here. Black Feather has already been banned already. So Vox and Rona are the key picks or bans coming up next. And you mentioned the ultimates landing. That was one of the other big things for Detonation. There were so many gauntlets that were so close to being the perfect gauntlet. But because they missed by Ooh. just a slight bit, they had almost no effect. So that's another thing that if those gauntlets end up connecting, all of a sudden this game looks very different. All right, well, we do have a Baron ban coming on through from the likes of Detonation here. Obviously, Arden and Lyra were locked in. We've been talking a lot about how strong Lyra is on the current update. It looks like Kraken are going to be able to grab that for themselves, which is kind of a scary situation for Detonation, I, I have to feel. I mean, in this situation, Rona is still open, and if Kraken don't ban her here, will Detonation pick her up, or will they give her over to Kraken once again? It was an incredible performance that we saw last game, so oh. giving it up again, I think it's a little risky. The Lorelei is something that we mentioned, uh, Sui Generis, and I feel like it's definitely one that needs yeah, to be Kraken respected. Yeah, Kraken, uh, Detonation and uh, China has played Jungle Lorelei, which is actually very strong. So now... Vox is open here. Vox will be a very good pick because Vox is actually good into Rona, especially with Arden. Rona won't be able to touch the Vox with the Vanguard, with his Sonic Zoom. But they're going to go prioritize the Samuel. Again, they're prioritizing the CP uh, carries here. Samuel Tatuki is one of the best Samuels in all of East Asia. We mentioned that we might see this hero being picked up just because he is stronger in 2.10 as well. He got a slight buff, very slight one. But with Tatuki being such an incredible player, we see that Nation pick it up. 
Well, we'll see how they can use this Samuel to make an impact on this series. They are currently 1-0 down, so they need this game. We already talked about how influential this game specifically will be across the course of this group. Detonation, they need this game in the bag if they want to keep their chances good on moving on into the quarterfinals. Yeah, some other junglers they have played are actually Baptiste actually has been a popular pick for Kraken. Taco would not be good here, although it would be make sense into a Samuel, but with Arden being there, he kind of counters the Taka. The, the Vanguard would save the Samuel, help him peel, and then once Samuel has Frostburn, he can just basically slow with his uh, Madison Verdicts against the Taka here. So they're going to make a decision here. Are they going to go with Baptiste, Rona potentially? But Rona is still a very strong pick here with the Lyra and with how well they played Rona. Yeah, you can see Kraken putting a lot of thought into these wow. picks, but then they get their two locked in quickly going to be the Celeste coming through with the Kroll. Yeah, I mean, we saw a very similar comp come out of the Nation Gaming, actually, last game, where they had the Sky, they had the Kroll. It's all about protecting that hyper carry. This time around, it's for Kraken, and they have the Celeste. So if Kroll plays better around his carry, they could definitely pull off the 2-0 right here. The interesting thing is, though, this is not the Kraken play style that we're used to seeing. This is not a hyper-aggressive composition. This is much more of the sit back, wait for your opponents to try and come to you and keep your carry safe while kiting away. But at the same time, Samuel fits that so same sort of bill. Usually when we see a Samuel, they're trying to kite a team fight backwards as well. So it'll be really interesting to see how Detonation finishes off their composition and how then they go head to head against this Kraken comp. It's going to be a Vox as the final lock-in here for Detonation. So Suijay, what are your thoughts on these two drafts then as first impressions on these? Kraken definitely wins the late game with Celeste, but Samuel is very strong in the early to mid phase, especially the mid phase. So if Destination can make a play with Vox scaling and Samuel scaling the mid phase, they can take this game. But if they don't end it and let Kraken get to late game with the crew and Celeste, that's going to be a really tough matchup. We'll see if Kraken can get to late game. Araki, thoughts? I mean, I have to agree. It's all about getting to the late game. However, they do have the Lyra who brings a lot of sustain throughout that mid game. So even though Samuel does hit a, a huge power spike where he can siege, the Lyra can counterplay it a little bit by continuing on to sustain the Celestin lane. So much of this game is going to be basically hanging in the balance in the jungle between the Samuel and the Kroll. If Samuel uses that level two power spike and goes aggressive against the Kroll right away, if Lyra's up in the lane to try and take care of things up there, then all of a sudden, Detonation can get themselves a huge early game lead. All right, we'll see if they can actually make that happen here. This feels like a very different composition from what we saw out of Kraken in game number one, but that could be a huge boon for them. If they can win with these two very dramatically different compositions, they're going to be looking fantastic as they move on towards the tournament. Yeah, especially that nation. If they make these double gauntlet plays happen, it's going to look beautiful because Lyra, although has one portal, they don't normally build Echo. So if you double gauntlet, you can actually trap the team and make some very nice plays. The only problem is to do that, you need to get so close very Versus the Celeste that has such a longer range. So for Kraken, they're going to need to abuse that range advantage that they have. And with what we saw in the first game, how well they understand their win condition, I feel like Kraken will be able to close it out here. All right, we'll see if Kraken can close this one out. It's about time to get on into this game. I'm going to pass it once again over to Jaws and Excoundrel to find out if Detonation can even things up or if this will be 2 0 to Kraken. Thank you very much, guys. Round number two. Here we go. Kraken took quite a decisive game of Destination Gaming in game number one. But can they flip the tables? Can Destination use their years of experience together to just beat Kraken down? I think I agree with what the analyst desk was saying primarily. You have a Samuel and a Vox here. Now, Samuel is good at one thing in the jungle, and that is coming to lane and pressuring that lane turret early on. That is what you need to do against the Celeste. You need to get a lot of pressure in that lane, especially before level eight. Draw Cruel into the lane to help defend where he is going to be less useful. Cruel is a really good 1v1 jungler. So Samuel needs to run to the lane, push that lane with Vox, push that lane, you know, obviously as Samuel can, pressure that first turret and look to put pressure on Celeste before she can scale up like crazy. Well, it was a very slow game in game number one, in all honesty. Maybe that Celeste can get rolling if it... The battle for the Halcyon Fold has begun. But we're going to jump on the fold and find out Detonation versus Team Kraken. This time Kraken are over on the blue, Detonation over on the red. We'll see if that domination can come through once again. Yeah, and the one worry that I'm going to have is a lot of this is going to be off uh, Kiz's ability to get those double gauntlets down. 
you know, you have to dive a Celeste in a lot of ways. You have to look, put a lot of pressure on it. You have to close the distance very quickly. Double Gaunt will be a really good way to do that. But at what point do you get Double Gaunt unlocked here for Detonation Gaming? And are you going to be in a position where you can burst the Celeste easily enough, especially through the Lyra's healing, which on 2.10 is before she had the nerf. So 2.11, she had a nerf to the health scaling of her healing. On this current update, she is really strong with stacking health. She can basically full heal a Celeste almost towards the end of the game. So you're going up in, sta in the sk stages where you're going to get Echo on, on, on Arden, but you're probably at that point also looking at a very high-scaled Celeste, as well as also having a very high-scaled Lyra, who's going to be able to do a lot of work to heal her. Third Nation Gaming playing a team cracking at their own game with this early aggression on the Elder Trin. It will get taken away. Unfortunately, Mr. Dog did not quite pick that one up with the Sigil. I like this as well from uh, Team Kraken. They were so aggressive for the Elder Trio in the first game, but they know that they probably can't duel too heavily early on this time round, especially versus a Samuel and the range advantage that Detonation Gaming have. So they are kind of backing off and, and tempering things. Oh, oh. Tatsuki takes so much damage. He's got the shielding from the Vanguard. Avalo should be all right. He's in that brush, taking a lot of damage as well. Actually, has to pop that blast. Going quite hard on Quiz. Here comes Mua as well. Kiz in a lot of trouble. Elder Trent doesn't quite root him up, but oh, he roots up the Cruel instead. Tatuki's now on the front line. Kiz gets out of there alive for the time being. Mr. Dog chasing him up, manages to secure the kill with the Principal Arcanum. And now Royal in a lot of trouble. Mua is just pushing in. Royal now has to back off. That was slightly questionable from Detonation Gaming. I like the, the, uh, the I guess, the thought process, but I like the thought process is going to the end game. Whoa, oh, Mua taking Mua a lot going of very low. There's the blood for blood. Kiz comes in. Two captains with two of the kills now. Elder Treant, though, is going to get secured by Team Kraken. I like the thought process from Detonation to go into the backs there, but they didn't really get a major advantage off the back of their Elder Treant. So you weren't in a position where you've got a kill on Cruel already, for instance, and you're trying to force a two versus one. That was an easy rotation from uh, Team Kraken. They pushed the lane up into the Vox. Vox couldn't rotate because the lane was pushing against him. And then they were able to rotate three members down to put pressure on Detonation, who tried to make that aggressive roam. So it was, it was probably a little bit over-aggressive from Detonation. Maybe they feel pressured in this game to try and take an advantage early on against this Celeste that's going to scale up like crazy. And you can see um, Mua looking towards... He's got a Void Battery already. He might then go towards either... Uh, you see multiple Celeste builds, but Eve of Harvest first is fine. Clockwork is, you know, first is fine. A lot of Celestes have a, a variety of builds here. And maybe she's just looking for ultimate energy regen to try and get a huge amount of wave play coming down. Because this is the best thing that you could do as Team Kraken right now. Get a huge amount of wave play coming down on Celeste. Prevent that first turret going down for as long as possible. I want to see Detonation Gaming rotate to lane super quickly. Four minutes onwards, I want to see Samuel in lane at every given opportunity. Sieging that turret with his Drifting Dark and Malice Inverted. Well, look at the turret here on Team Kraken's side of the field. Already down to about two thirds HP. Mua hasn't spent uh, the majority of time in the lane. He's just been bullied out by Royal. Even Kiz paying him a little visit as well. Mr. Dog will be able to sustain him up and Babbler is in this bush. I think Kiz saw him, so that's why they're backing off now. They're going to flare him out regardless. And like you said, Tuki, that's why we want to see him and he's up in the lane. Yeah, but he came in after the rest of Team Kraken was already there, so you don't even have the advantage moving in. There's the Drifting Dark. Land some good Malice and Verdicts, and suddenly you're in a fighting position to see this turret. Huge oh, damage. Huge on damage Mua. on Mua. Tatuki just forcing him out here. Bubbalo actually had to trade a little bit of his own life bar there just to save Mua. Let's move forward. Royal just focusing on that turret down by Borg into the core collapse. Another Helio Genesis. A couple of basic attacks will kill him, but Vanguard is there oh, to save him. Oh, the snipe, oh. baby! Tatuki finds his first kill of the game. Nice snipe with the Vance and Verdict. That is exactly what I wanted to see Detonation Gaming doing. Just putting pressure on with that range advantage that they have at this stage in the game. The great push advantage, the siege to power. They're going to go for this first turret. It's very close to going down here. One more min minion wave and they should be able to get there. Select is coming back. We'll see if they've got enough time to put pressure on this turret. They should be able to push this minion wave up and get it, you would hope. Yeah, you can imagine so, especially with Babalava being very low as well. This massive Verdix is starting to rain down. Sigil to heal up Babalava. Oh, Whoa, there we go. There's the from Hell's Heart. Does land Ishtin to the core collapse. Mr. Dog secures the kill. Uh, they were so desperate to push onto that turret. I would have done as well, but Babala hit six. You have to be aware of those level, uh, level ups. I don't think that uh, Detonation Gaming had any idea that Babala had hit level six, and it was a really nice execution from Team Kraken there. Instantaneous into the double stun. Samuel could do nothing with no reflex block at this point in time. 
and suddenly they're able to weather the storm. And, and the longer they weather the storm, the more time they give to Celeste. And the one commodity that Celeste loves right now is time. And time is what she needs to get up to scaling up towards those later game builds. Clockwork first. Interesting choice. You don't see it all the time in a lot of other regions, but it will give her the ability to spam Heliogenesis and be, basically be able to clear waves a little bit more efficiently. Oblivion does catch one. Wait for it is going to get blocked. Nice use of the Crucible there. And the turret does end up falling as well. Detonation using that Oblivion to zone and to secure themselves a little bit ago. Yeah, that was a nice double uh, Oblivion into a silence there coming up to Detonation Gaming. The primary aim is what you saw. They just wanted to get that first turret off the map. Opening up this first turret now allows them to be a bit more aggressive in the jungle. They can look for more opportunities to put pressure on the Celeste. If you push that lane up and Celeste is constantly trying to clear it, you can set up for things like Gold Miner. This opens up the map now for Detonation Gaming, but they need to use that space to put pressure on Celeste and force her to make decisions between farming and potentially contesting neutral objectives, or helping rotate towards the jungle where Detonation Gaming to look, can look to be a bit more aggressive. They can also do more of the same jaws. They can also just again rotate to lane and put pressure on that tier two turret. So there's lots of things that Detonation Gaming can do in this game to start to push their advantage now. They don't have a huge one, but they have got the map opened up and uh, this is where they really need to start pulling the trigger. Kiz is halfway to level six as well. And as soon as that Gauntlet comes through, Tuki will be able to layer that with the Oblivion. But I like the first pick up here by Mr. Dog. Pick up, oh, hang on a second. Stun does land Solar Storm as well. My Isn't God. even looking at that one. He just got instantly deleted. Another kill on the board from Mr. Dog. Team Kraken. I'm gonna just push in this turret. Yeah, they have got such beautiful uh, synergy between all of their, uh, their skills. It's like a symphony of abilities coming up from Team Kraken right now. They're going to put pressure onto oh, Tuki as well. Tuki in a lot of trouble. Oh, those stacks are building up. Oh, they just can't quite save and uses those boosts to get away. Oh, oh the Oblivion to zone as well, but Torrent loses Agar on the key member. Here comes Royal, going to use those boosts. Babylon going very low. Rui in a 1v2 situation. Still taken down to Tuki. Royal's going to be able to find oh, one, and they find the next word. as well. Two kills to Detonation. So many good things happen over the course of that fight for Detonation Gaming. Yes, Team Kraken, characteristically going aggressive here in that situation, but like you said, Tutuki zoning out the only escape path that was safe into the jungle with the Oblivion. That meant that Cruel had to tank the turret a bit longer. They're going to get on this. Mr. Onto... Dog, wrong place, wrong time. Passageway over the wall. Elder Trin isn't going to quite save you, but the Crystal Sentry will. And with Babylon rotating down as well, they're just going to satisfy themselves with a Sentry kill. I like that. It takes something off the map, at least for that team fight win. You need to always think about what you can gain from the map once you take a team fight win like that and detonation they get that crystal sentry. It might not seem like much, but these small objectives add up in the grand scale of things. That team fight though was beautiful, Jaws, you know, previously. The, the, the oblivion to zone, the way that, that Tatuki danced between the heliogenesis to make it difficult for um, Moi to, to basically select one to use a supernova on, he danced between them so well. Oh, it was just beautiful from Detonation Gaming. It shows you what they are truly capable of as a team when they are playing on all cylinders firing. Just the siege potential as well is so big, and even with Kiz hitting oh, that level that's the level six. Whoops, Desi. It's all good. That's a big Heliogenesis, though. He does get healed up. Mua taking a lot of damage. He's got that range advantage now, but look at those Malice and Verdicts really striking it when it hurts. This is now. the point in the game where Samuel needs to start to put pressure. He's gone for a Frostburn first, which is not something that you often see on Samuels. The reason Samuel kind of wasn't super meta in 2.10 was that he had a pretty awkward build path. There's Gorla a Gorla comes in. Royal's going to be the back line. Nice core collapse on him, though. Straight into the From Hell's heart. It gets stunned up, locked up, and he's dead. Passageway as well. It's going to get a nice little bit of distance there. Quiz is going to very low, and Kiz ends up falling. Now, Tatuki in the 1v3. Heliogenesis raining down, but it should be Team Kraken taking this turret. That was Mr. Dog blocking a Vox Silence with a Crucible, allowing Moi to basically set up for a big Solar Storm. Tatuki now has to be super careful here. I think he'll get away, but my word, that was brilliant from Mr. Dog. It allowed Mua to essentially turn around Ooh. and blow up Royale in the middle of that team fight. He, he got, he, the silence didn't go through. He was able to cast Heliogenesis, Heliogenesis into, um, into the uh, Solar Storm and he got a massive piece of damage down onto to Royale. I like that they're now considering their own reflex box. I think they do need it. Um, they weren't there before, but I think right now, all of these little bits of, of, of advantages that are being given over to Team Kraken is only going to help accelerate their cause. They, they have gone for clockwork into Shatterglass, so scaling up in pure burst damage right now. You can see how quickly Mua is, is basically clearing those waves. Just 
one-shotting them at this point. Pretty scary situation. But that's a scary situation. 700 damage Helo Genesis. Boomerang with a surfboard doesn't quite land. That'll be Kiz just blocking that up with the Crucible. And now it's all the pressure game, but Kiz takes half his HP just in a couple of Helio Genesis steps forward and gets punished for it. Avalar now finds himself on two key. Kiz going very low, has to exit the fight automatically. Just going very, very low at this point still. That's Fountain though, it's Scoundrel. Maybe trying to bait them in at this point. Yeah, maybe trying to bait them in just a little bit. He also might want to get that Life Spring passive working so he doesn't need to regenerate as much health off the Fountain active. I love that Royale basically took an aggressive position there, trying to clear the wave, trying to essentially say, oh, yeah, I dare you to go for them. I have position on your Celeste. I'm building breaking point stacks on your Lyra. I'm looking to get into that back line. So he basically had a really good aggressive position that made it difficult for Team Kraken to select where they wanted to fight. I like the Shatterglass build on Mua as well. This is basically saying that I'm looking to blow up your carries. I'm going for Shattered Glass to get the maximum burst damage down onto someone like Tatuki or Royale. Royale has responded by getting tier 2 shielding, which is going to help him immensely, but Tatuki is still very vulnerable to the supernovas coming out from Mua just because of that Shattered Glass. Well, there's the dragon's eye completed from Tatuki. Whoa! Passage oh, range, the bright ball arc straight into the surfboard as well. I believe it's going to come out of this to everybody. Kiz going very low. There's the Gorlo to the escape disengage. And now Tatuki over on the side of the wall. Babylon taking a lot of damage. Did get stunned up as well. That is still Team Kraken with the health bar advantage. Royal is going to have to back here as well, which results in another turret. Yeah, the siege potential from Team Kraken now that they've hit these item spikes. They've hit that level spike on Celeste so easily as well. I feel like this is going to be difficult for uh, Detonation Games to come back. They've got to fight us now as well. Yeah, Tatsuki is in a lot of trouble here. Babalama is going to be able to chase him up. Although, saying that, Frostburn is doing a lot of work for him. Yeah, and actually look at Detonation Gaming. He's got them caught between a rock and a hard place right now. Babalo's trying to find it, but he can't quite get to him. They're going to go straight onto Mua. Fountain used there, easily healing them up. But Tatuki, not much energy left. He's in the front line, so he's oh, almost going to hit him. Almost damage. executes him. And now Kiss having to back off as well. Royal, though, playing up really aggressively. Oh, look at straight that into collapse. the core collapse. Vanguard's going to keep him alive for the time being, but Kiss ends up taking his own life, basically. He just steps up to the plate and gets punished for it. And now Mr. Dog, Babalo's going to chase him through, and that is Team Kraken with the ace. Oh, Detonation Gaming had the perfect setup to put pressure onto Team Kraken there, but they didn't consider the fountain coming out. Royale, I think, had the right motivation going in to put pressure on Tamua. He knew that a lot of the resources had been expended to try and save him, but he didn't manage to block the core collapse because I don't think he had the reflex block up at the time. It was a beautiful core collapse from Mua. Let's take a look at that again. Watch Royale very carefully. He's building breaking point stacks on the outside. So he's getting those breaking point stacks up. He's seen his opportunity to go into Celeste, but that core collapse was just so, so good from Mua. And it allowed him to essentially then collapse onto the box and take him down. Samuel was in no position, no position to contend in that fight because of how low he was. But oh, I, I, Mua is a god. This guy is unbelievably good. And, and this is a team that we just don't know enough about. Well, I tell you what, after this series, we know all we need to know. They are a bloody brilliant team. Mugu's has got a large backpack, and it contains a Krul and a Lyra <laughs> at this time. I think, the, I, I think that's disingenuous to say <laughs> that that backpack contains anything. All of them have got a backpack, and it's, <laughs> it's containing their Are they all team. inside each other's backpacks, stacked up in a little, a little tower? They, they are. Look, this is a team coming into Worlds that we found it very difficult to research. We couldn't find much many videos of them because obviously it, it's difficult for people outside of China to do so. We didn't know much about their playstyle. They have come into Worlds and they are taking on one of the most consistent competitors of our previous World Series. That nation on the wrong side of the map completely. Team Kraken though poking away. Look at this Heliogenesis set up here. The cauldrons all over the battlefield. They're going to be able to back off, but Destination Gating corralling them in to the turret. But. Well, at the moment, Team Kraken just easily just poking them out. They're just going to clear these waves. They're going to make it difficult. Basically, they're saying to Team Kraken, we're going to try and use that Samuel advantage every time we have it, and we're going to try and clear those waves. Oh, there's the portal in. Oh, the surfboard doesn't quite land. It actually just comes straight back. Boomerang indeed. Still Kraken on the wrong side. They're just clearing out each other's waves, it's scandal. But Kraken have got the advantage <laughs> in terms of health bars. They're going to need to swap at some point. Royal going very aggressive. 
Suki trying to set something up here. Kraken has awakened as well. And Abby Kiz set very low. Heliogensis just raining death from above. Wait for it will come out. Only signs this move for the time being. And that's going to be a gauntlet in just separating them. But Kiz has separated himself. They already take down Satuki. Solar Storm's going to smash Royal. And that'll just be the crew chasing him through. Spectral Smite takes him down to about half HP. And Kiz used that other gauntlet as Mua easily solos him out. Team Kraken find themselves another ace. Unbelievable from Team Kraken again, just pinpoint perfect in their team fighting position. Mua able to just get so much damage off. Again, it was a really risky tactic from Detonation Gaming. They were essentially leaving themselves open for this kind of play coming from Team Kraken simply because they had that side of the map. They had nowhere to retreat to. They were basically trying to use that range advantage from Samuel, poke out a little bit and find an engage after they'd done some damage. But they were never finding consistent enough damage coming from the Samuel. And now Team Kraken are going to get this, well, li literally get this Kraken off the back of that team fight. Infusion's coming across the board as well now. Mua is going to pick up here these three items as well. Three damage items, I should say. Still got the flask just in case he needs that shielding a, bit, a little, little bit later on. But with that Kraken on the board now, we've got to think about how that's actually going to impact the next couple of minutes, because Kraken, they have got so much range on their side. They're just going to be able to poke Detonation Gaming out. They are the ones that are going to have to engage. You can see Royale's gone for a Poison Shield Breaking Point Bone Saw build. It's a pretty popular build on Vox. Um, but realistically, I don't think he's facing up enough, up, up, up enough against armor to make it super worth it. I would have maybe considered the Sorrow Blade to be a bit more burst heavy for the Celeste. This is a more of an elongated fight build. I don't think they've been having the opportunity to build those fight stacks. From House Heart is going to get blocked by that Crucible. They're going to focus the turret with the Kraken. It's going to go down super low. There comes the Oblivion. Does go a little bit wide. Tatuki trying to kite back, but going extremely low. Gets jumped on. Mua going in melee mode. And there comes the Agorna as well. Does come down, but it doesn't matter because they're just going to block it for the time being. Still gets stunned up. Their Kraken's going to be able to focus the Crystal. And this just might be all over. Royal's going to be able to secure a couple of kills, but the Kraken is just going to finish off the base. Team Kraken are going to take game number two. 2-0 over Detonation. The team that we knew nothing about coming into Worlds, the team from China that many people had written off in some ways, have absolutely decimated their first series against one of our veterans from East Asia. This team are truly putting themselves in the running as the dark horse of this tournament. Their unfiltered, untapered aggression is so difficult to play against, but not only do they have the aggression, they've got the ability to play a calculated, long-scaling game. Mua on this Celeste is, is just pure joy to watch. That was a beautiful series showcasing multiple different tactics that you can execute on this 3v3 map. Unbelievable fatigue, but they don't even look phased. They don't even look phased. It was easy game for them, you know. It, it, that was just so nice to watch. That experience just didn't come through, it seems, for the pride of Japan on Detonation Gaming. Thing is, can they come back from that? 2-0, but they, that last game was so close. It felt so it close was, up until the time you just saw the Celeste just snowball out of control and Kraken. What an amazing game. It was just that mid-game spike needed to be far more punishable by Detonation Gaming. They need to get into that lane, consistently pressure the lane, stop that Celeste from scaling up, but they didn't quite execute. And I think that's really been the moral or even the sort of the, the tale of this game. Detonation Gaming had all the right ingredients. They didn't just execute properly. They had all the right ingredients. They baked the cake. It just came out flat. I think we're going to throw it over to the analyst desk where Munch three beautiful analysts can just take it away. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, we are ready to break down that 2-0 victory for Kraken and a stonking start to the tournament for China in general. This region looks incredibly strong, far stronger than I think any of us were expecting coming into the tournament. We said it was difficult to prep for them for these teams. Apparently, it was a little bit too difficult in general. And Detonation now 0-2 across this group. This is bad news for East Asia, but fantastic news for China. Yeah, I mean, you look at this matchup, and this is the team that was second to Hunters all year long. Hunters has been dominating that region, but if Kraken comes out looking this good, how good is this Chinese region, actually? <laughs> this is incredible stuff for the region as a whole. They've got to be so happy with their performance after this game, and just looking forward for the rest of this group, you know, all of a sudden G2, 
they got to be wondering what they're going to be able to do against this squad as well. Absolutely. I'm excited to get into the next game to see how things are going to continue to pan out. But going into this game, Kraken were one of the only teams to have previous competitive experience on Update 2.10. And I feel like it really showed in this Yeah, I mean, it's something that's given them a huge advantage. They're the only one of the few teams that played competitively on 2.10. Yes, all teams have been preparing for the update, but they're one of the only that's actually competitive play. And the reason why that gives them an advantage, because as you can see, their understanding of the meta seems to be far superior in the Celeste pick and the Cruel pick, the Lyra sustain, and then even first game with the Rona and the Black Feather, just so much better when it comes to the draft. Now, Suijay, me and you were talking during the game about the coordination of detonation, because they didn't necessarily always seem to be on the same page here. Yeah, I think Taduki and uh, Royal needed to synergize better. They won the early game. I mean, Samuel was putting so much pressure. They got a first turret at 550, and at the 8-minute mark, uh, they got the gold mine and Celeste, and they were ahead by 1k gold, and then everything fell apart after that. Kraken just played phenomenal. Their combo with the cruel stunts, the Celeste's core collapse stun, I mean, beautiful play, and then that was able to win those fights and put so much pressure on the objective. And that's what really sealed the, sealed the deal. And there's one fight where Tazuki back off. Arden had Fountain. And I think the communication was a little off there because they, they could have won that fight and got the ace there and maybe changed things around, but it didn't happen in their favor. What's also worth mentioning is that the Nation Gaming actually played a lot better in that second game than how they played in the first game. But still, uh, Kraken were just the much better team. And their draft allowed them to, to do and win the game easily. The Celeste pick, as I mentioned, it combines so well with Cruel because Cruel can protect her. And then Lyra is just such a strong 2 point temp pick. Yeah, and uh, the draft and then the execution of that draft was just very important from Kraken. They had this composition where it was very similar to the detonation composition from game number one, where it was all about you know, protecting your carry, keeping them alive, using the curl to peel, and they did that. They kept yeah. the curl on the back lines. He was never diving in deep, and they knew what they were up against. With the Vox and the Samuel, that's a lot of ramp-up damage, damage that has to take a little bit of time in the fights to really build up to what it's cap fully capable of. And... By the time they got that damage ramped up, all of a sudden there's more healing coming out from Lyra, and Kroll's able to body block so many of the Samuel shots that they just never really got significant damage onto the Celeste. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were talking, we've always talked about how Celeste is this late game hyper carry. Honestly, in this game, it felt like it was an early game hyper carry because they were playing pretty <laughs> aggressively with that Celeste. But let's take a look at one of the fights that happened during this game. This was just beyond the 12 minute mark, and there was a there was a heroic moment from Tatuki where he was kiting the enemy team across the entire map on Samuel. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, after all of this coming out from Tatuki, the fight that we're going to bring up on your screens now, it, we've got a replay of what happened after all of that kiting, and unfortunately, the kiting wasn't quite enough. Yeah, this is the one where I took notes on it. Tatuki, they, they actually collapse and sandwich the Celeste. Vox jumps on her. Samuel gets low. He gets ulted and almost dies with a sliver of health. And he backs out completely from the fight. And then Royal decides to jump onto the side, almost gets her killed. And then Arden saves Royal, has a fountain. If he was near the team and Samuel's in that fight, they would have won that fight. That was a critical 12 minute and 40 second turnaround because they were behind 2K gold lead at that point. And something that played a significant role in that team fight and generally throughout the game is, is the Nation Gaming's item choices. The, the poison shift into the breaking point, the bonesaw, is a build that doesn't have a lot of burst. And going up against the Celeste, it's a target that you just want to eliminate quickly. I, I'm very disappointed with how the Nation Gaming built throughout the series. Even the first game that Sky went for the Frostburn, it just seems to not have the best understanding of 2.10. On the other side, I'm very impressed with how Kraken was building mm -hmm. in this game. The Celeste going for the Shatter Glass with the Broken Myth and the Clockwork didn't have the Dragon's Eye to sit there and rely on ramp up damage, so could throw out those Solar yeah. Storms at the start of a fight and still do the same amount of damage and then have that short cooldown to get a second Solar Storm later on in the fight as well if they did drag out for a long time. And we saw that a couple of fights in this game where there were multiple Solar Storms getting used. That's such a huge ultimate. When you get that off twice in a team fight at the same damage level, it's pretty game changing. Yeah, that can be the end of the game, honestly, quite simply put. And fantastic stuff coming out from Kraken. I want to talk a little bit about China as a region now because we've had a 2-0 here for Kraken, a phenomenal result coming out for them. But over on the alternate stream as well, the series between Team Solo Mid and Hunters has finished. It was a 1-1 scoreline between the two, which wow. means we have a region here that people, <laughs> I think, were pretty...